This is Plymouth Meeting Mall. Sitting just over six miles east of King of Prussia Mall, which is the third largest mall in the United States, Plymouth Meeting Mall is a far cry from its nearest competitor. While the mall may be doing better than other dead and dying malls in the area surrounding Philadelphia, Plymouth Meeting Mall could use a bit of business boost. Trying to stay cool. News 3's Robin McIntosh joins us live now from the Plymouth Meeting Mall in Montgomery County. Robin? Well, Stephanie, tonight I've got my jacket on, I've got my tie on, and I am comfortable. We're here at the suburban version of Logan Fountain, only out there the temperature is in the high 90s. In here, it's in the low 70s. How do you spell relief? At the Plymouth Meeting Mall, you spell it A-I-R, as in conditioning. Thousands of square feet of stores and walkways, 20 degrees cooler than the outside. We have plenty of seating. Uh, park-like settings, food court. We have, you know, lots of things that they can do to, you know, kill some time as well, stay cool. And for seniors like Mike and Joe Pilsicki, a place to escape one of the hottest summers they can remember. I love the mall on day like this because I'm very comfortable in here and it's nice and cool and it's a time to relax, then go back home to the heat. Today, the mall's a bit of a hybrid plaza and enclosed shopping center. These exterior shops being added as part of a $100 million redevelopment in 2007. Wow. What was that? Well, how are you supposed to open it? <laughs> When it first opened in 1966, Plymouth Meeting was the third mall in the Philadelphia area and one of the earliest in the country. It featured two anchors, the department stores Lit Brothers and Strawbridge and Clothier. Interestingly, the mall also featured a church called Church on the Mall, which used the fountain for baptisms. A nine-day Hawaiian Luau Festival celebrated the mall's first year anniversary. In 1968, a South African tree climber named Honey was able to escape its cage from the mall's petting zoo, steal some cake, and began living in the rafters of the mall. More cake was laid out and finally drew the animal back after three weeks. In 1969, an unconnected office tower was built in the parking lot and about 100 stores were inside the mall at this time. One year after that, a fire damaged about a third of those stores in the east end of the mall. The west side of the mall features the most well-known focal point for it, its huge fountain, which has been around since the opening. The opposite side of the mall also had a fountain, but was never replaced after being damaged in the fire. Also, I must interject here saying that while watching the rest of this footage, keep in mind we are here at closing time on a Friday night, so it is a bit darker and emptier than usual on weekends. On the other side of the mall is Boscov's department store. This is where Lit Brothers was until leaving in 1976, and would be reopened as a Hess's department store three years later as one of the company's largest branches. They would close in 1993 when the chain was in the process of going under. Three years later again, Boscov's moved in and has stayed ever since. Behind the fountain on the west side is where Macy's formerly resided in the Strawbridge and Clothier Anchor, which had stayed there until all their chains were converted to Macy's after a buyout. The first new renovation to the mall came in 1983, with 16 new stores as well as a two-story antique carousel. 
That carousel was removed after Boscovs felt it obscured their store and has since been replaced by this modern one in the middle of the mall. Oh, look at that, though. Unconnected to the concourse is what is called the Lifestyle Wing, which was part of the 2007 renovation that brought in several smaller retailers, the Whole Foods Market, as well as an underground parking garage. Oh, it's a parking garage. A big, empty parking garage. Probably more like a Some of those renovation dollars came from an unlikely source. After selling a winning Powerball ticket in 2009, the state rewarded the mall $100,000. This area was where the out-parcel IKEA store was. Back when it opened in 1985, it was the company's first store in all of America. IKEA has just opened its 70th store, its first in America. Come to the grand opening. It's a fairy tale come true. They would move to a nearby city in 2003. Still, the mall would fill most stores that left relatively quickly. Another regular mall chain that came to Plymouth meeting early was Spencer Gifts. Beginning as a mail order catalog in 1947, their first mall store opened in New Jersey in 1963, and three years later their store at this mall was one of their first five. Numerous events have been held at the mall throughout the years, including the Miss Pennsylvania pageant, an antique auto show, and many concerts throughout the decades. Another event would be a promotional tour for the 1986 BMX movie Rad, where the movie's professional bikers showed off their skills at the mall. This is it, the new looking bicycles called BMX. The easy riders of the 80s, acrobatics on bikes, ballet on rubber tires. With the cast and freestyling team of the new BMX movie Rad, this is it arranged an exclusive, first time ever, indoor ramp demonstration of BMX freestyling at the Plymouth Meeting Mall with 1985 world ramp champ, teenager Rick Segura. While this mall has not experienced as much crime as other ones we have covered, during the early 80s I found report after report about car thefts in the parking lot as well as shoplifting taking place inside the mall. In fact, employees themselves at the mall's Pier 1 store were caught having skimmed over $2,000 from the registers in a year's period. You'll also notice there's no formal food court here. This is because the food court was converted to the Legoland Discovery Center in 2016. The following year, Macy's closed, and again, it only took one year to fill the vacancy with a Burlington, Dick's Sporting Goods, Michael's, and an Edge Fitness. The original owners would sell Plymouth Meeting Mall along with five other malls to the Pennsylvania Real Estate Investment Trust for a combined total of $548 million. As of 2022, the mall has a respectable 85% occupancy rate, but the future is not set. In March of that year, the owner announced they had serious concerns they could remain afloat the rest of the year, as they are already $1.2 billion in debt. To help alleviate that debt, they have been selling off portions of their malls for redevelopment into housing units. However, in 2021, Plymouth Township denied a plan for the construction of 11-story apartment building at the mall. Another concept they are eyeing is converting the concourse into office space. While King of Prussia Mall continues to expand, can Plymouth Meeting Mall remain as a mixed retail lifestyle center? Or will one of America's early malls be renovated into oblivion? In uh, Christmas time, there used to be a wall-to-wall -wall people. Yeah. I remember the Woolworths. That was like both floors. Strawbridge and Blue Brother was one of the two best stores around. And uh, they used to bring a lot of people. 
in order for it to stay, it needs to bring in the people. While the mall won't say what it's doing to fill up retail spaces, it says new stores are in the works. But places also that don't center around shopping will keep the Montgomery County landmark intact. In Plymouth Meeting, Deanna Durante, NBC10 News.